Okay, here we're going to start an episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff to have a really cool review for you guys from the brand Zinn. A little about them, they were founded back in 1961. These are made in Germany and uh, they're pretty much a well-respected mid-tier German brand founded by flight instructor Helmut Zinn. And in terms of the type of watch, I consider this to really fall within that everyday adventure watch genre. Some key characteristics and design when you're looking for something within this space, of course you're really just going to want something that is sporty, legible, and tough. And this watch has all of those things. This is known as the Military Type 3. It is a Japanese limited edition. Uh, it was released in quantity of just 300 pieces. And it is a tactical watch made for the Japanese domestic market, which was launched back in 2013. You can buy this particular example from the team over at Belmont Watches for 2,500 bucks pre-owned and uh yeah this thing is pretty sweet big shout out to belmont watches for not only just uh lending this piece in but even tracking it down and you know curating such a fun watch into uh their sale collection so with all that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look Okay guys, so this is a very, very unique piece as you can see just by looking at it. It's very different, uh, just the whole dial layout, the way that they even branded it, put the font, everything is just a, a really fun play on your typical military style watch. Now, in terms of some of those dimensions, uh, this is going to be 42 millimeters in diameter. Um, and it is essentially about probably 11.8 millimeters thick and 49 millimeters lug to lug. It is made out of German submarine steel, which has been tegumented. And uh, so it does have that nice additional hardness to it. Bead blasted case, and it's also argon filled. Now, the sapphire crystal is flat with a double AR coating on the inner and outer side. And of course, you can see if I get this just on there, you can see the outer AR coating does have some slight wear. Again, that's only in this direct kind of reflection, but as you can see here, it's as if it doesn't exist. Like there's no, uh, you know, almost no reflection there. Uh, so you can, it almost feels like you just reach in and touch the dial. So uh, it's still working really well, but just, you know, in terms of just looking at it in the light, you're going to be able to see that, yeah, this is one of those models that does have the dual AR coating and then the outer AR coating, especially on something that is, you know, a hardened tegumented case, really rough and tumble. I'm sure this has been through a lot in terms of, you know, its, uh, its actions uh, for the previous owners. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to pick up a couple of little micro scratches here and there. Now, getting into the bezel, very interesting. It is actually a... 60 click bi-directional bezel so it can go backwards and forwards and as you can see the timing scale on there is very traditional for a diver with the full 60 minute graduation uh, and then you get to over to the crown which is on the opposite side it does have the old school Zen S uh, there and then nice couple of rows looks like four rows of knurling uh, very easy to grip very nice size and then of course to interact with it's definitely very smooth and very well executed just like you would expect from a fine piece of German engineering now getting into the movement inside as you guys can see this is uh, you know pretty niche layout which means the movement inside is also uh, pretty interesting so although you can't see it it is a Swiss automatic ETA 2895-2 which has a 50 hour power reserve and a 4 Hertz beat rate so that's going to be that full 28,800 vibration per hour sweep uh the case back is solid and etched and you can see it looks like 
maybe even slightly polished. I don't know if that's just from wear over time or if maybe they had some deeper gouges that they polished out. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, didn't re-blast everything to get the satin back uh, precisely. But it actually feels very nice here uh, to the touch. So that means it's gonna be a little bit more comfortable on your wrist as well. So getting into the dial, as you guys can see here, really nice, true matte black dial with a printed index. You do have the date there at the 12 o'clock with a small seconds uh, subdial right below that with the red little uh, running seconds. And then we get into the hands there. The other hands are actually loomed really nicely with painted bases. So it just flows really, really well. And then you're also gonna have uh, Super Luminova that does glow green. I'm not sure what this is specified as. Um, and then you got 20 bar or 200 meters of water resistance, which is more than enough for your daily adventure. 22 millimeter uh, lug width, and these are drilled. And uh, of course, you're also getting this fully tegumented H-Link bracelet uh, with a screw hex construction there. So very overbuilt, very beefy. Um, this is actually, I believe, size for a seven inch wrist. Uh, unfortunately, I do have a larger wrist than that. So, But one of the nice things is you actually do have an extension. So. I can get that over my wrist now and uh, go ahead and switch this on uh, just so I can show you guys how it lays. All right, guys, so as you can see, uh, although with that extension out, I do have a little bit of extra slack. I did wanna show you guys how this wears and I think it looks really great. Of course, if I do get my wrist a bit too close, to the lens there, you're gonna get a bit of perspective distortion and it's gonna make the watch seem a lot larger than it actually is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low here and then just tighten up the frame so you guys can get a more detailed look while still just keeping a bit of a true aspect ratio of how this may lay on your own wrist. And you can see it's a lot more centered um, than it was kind of previously, right? When it was up against the lens. Uh, and I think this looks really great. You can see it is relatively thin um, right there. You can see it even has the little moisture capsule, uh, which will suck all the moisture out. It probably looks like it's due for an update. Uh, but of course you don't necessarily have to. Uh, it's just one of those things, uh, you know, with the additional pieces of maintenance, if you want to keep up with it, it's going to completely keep running. Uh, otherwise, you know, just like anything else. Um, but it is nice to have everything kind of up to spec. So that would definitely be something you will want to look into. So this thing looks really, really good. Check that out. I just dig it. Uh, it's very handsome, very different. Definitely gives you military vibes. And of course, me, uh, you know, prior active duty Marine Corps, uh, I love a good mill sub. Uh, there's just something about that, uh, you know, an una unapologetic robust nature that is just really you know function forward and through that function forward design you just get uh, some really cool form factor that's just a little bit different that you know normally could necessarily be planned out to look different and unique but it just kind of ends up being different and unique when you see it so with that said let's actually get this off the wrist set up for some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Hey, as you can see, this is actually really nice. And Zen aren't necessarily known for their really potent loom. Um, and it's considering this is an older watch, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how well this is done. I would say my U50, uh, you know, that's really known as more of kind of, hey, when they started taking loom a little bit more seriously, but this looks really good. But one thing I always like to work in is a bit of a low light transition, because you're always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. So maybe include a bit of harsh lighting, which typically could expose any types of production defects, but you're just gonna notice here that matte dial is absolutely matte. Check that out. It almost 
turns into an anthracite gray tone. Uh, the matte blasted finish here on the case and bracelet just pretty much stays really, really nice. And you can see very soft in terms of its reflecting off of the light source there. But another great thing is you can notice in this mixed lighting condition is really how well the contrast holds up on this dial and bezel combination to where you really, really have such a great idea of how everything is working and continuing to work and really just ends up being, uh, you know, really legible and usable for a tactical timepiece. So very, very cool, looks very good. Of course, not too much complexity in terms of the finishing uh, that are gonna be really highlighted by this segment. So with that said, let's get into our closing thoughts on the wrist. Very thin and flat profile. Definitely wears like a full-size sports watch uh, with plenty of wrist presence, but never really intrusive or cumbersome enough to distract from the mission at hand. So from a tactical timepiece perspective, I know a lot of times field watches can be quite small. Uh, diver watches can be quite big. This is something in between, right? Uh, that That's just uh, a bit more of a multi-purpose tool. And I dig it. Um, so in terms of model variants, uh, you know, this is kind of uh, not applicable because this is a special edition. I mean, I'm sure there are other watches that are going to share a very similar case, bracelet, whatnot. But in terms of the movement, the dial layout and everything like that, um, this is definitely very special. Now, in terms of comparable models, you know, international mill subs are collecting, you know, within kind of collecting those. Uh, they're just a kind of subgenre of their own, and there are so many rare and unique references to appreciate. Um, so this Zen really fits very comfortably within that space, being a nice balance of capability and desirability, right? Um, they've built quite a reputation and a name for themselves for building very technically capable and tough wristwatches. So for me guys, bottom line, whether you love Zen or just enjoy discovering rare and obscure references, this military type three presents a whole lot of value, both as a capable tactical timepiece and as a deserving conversation piece. Um, so another huge shout out to Belmont Watches. Definitely check the links down in the description if you are interested. Uh, if you like the video, please do it like, and if you haven't already, Please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Hey.